Welcome to the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, uh, part six of our Calc 1 review. So the theorem states, uh, if lowercase f of x is continuous, on the closed interval, uh, AB, and if capital F of X is an antiderivative of lowercase F of X. So in other words, uh, if the derivative of capital F of X is equal to lowercase f of X, then we have that the definite interval from A to B of lowercase f of X dx is equal to capital F evaluated at B minus capital F evaluated at A. Um, in terms of alternative notation, I will often write this with an intermediary step where I will write capital F of X and then a long vertical line with A as a subscript and B as a super subscript, as a superscript. Um, so this is a notation you will see me use regularly. Um, it's essentially indicating that I am using the fundamental theorem of calculus. All right, so for example, let's go ahead and evaluate the definite interval, uh, the integral from zero to one of x squared dx. So here our lowercase f of x is x squared. We take our integral of x squared dx, that's one third x cubed plus c. So we can go ahead and pick our capital F of X to just be one third X cubed. And so we have a definite integral from zero to one of X squared DX is equal to one third X cubed, then our vertical line evaluated at our bounds of zero and one. So this becomes one third times one cubed minus one third times zero cubed. And this winds up simply being one third. So this is again, the notation that I will use for evaluating definite intervals. This is much, much, much faster than having to use a Riemann sum and taking a limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. Um, in the next video, we will take a look at a few more examples that we can evaluate using the fundamental theorem of calculus.